Welcome back to Bamford Rose and it's forum chat time. In this week's forum chat, it's a continuation of last week's topic, which touched on extended warranty. Now, I saw this interesting poll on a forum and it asked a question who has or would have an extended warranty policy. Now, as you know, I always recommend purchasing your car from franchise dealer, get the bells and whistles, approved use, extended warranty on the car, get it checked out in a post-purchase inspection, claim immediately for anything that's not quite right. Use that warranty policy for what it's worth, because it will time out eventually uh, for a year. And then when you've got confidence in the car, come away from the franchise network and get it looked at properly in the independent world. Now, that's what I recommend for DB7, Vanquish, DB9, V8 Vantage, and all of the iterations 4.7, AMR, Vantage S, V12V, DBS, Virage, all the way up to the Mercedes era cars. That's because those cars can be looked after by a number of independents. Now, importantly, the independents pretty much got to have AMDS, the Aston Martin Diagnostic System. This is going to mean that they're going to be able to plug into any of those cars, read faults, reset faults, do a bit of data logging, which will enable them to fault find and then fix your car and hand it back to you. The AMDS system is completely standalone which means that you don't need a connection to the internet and you can take it anywhere in the world and work out of a car park, work out of a workshop, data log in a car going down the road. It's completely standalone and you don't need any backup to use it. AMDS has lots of software on for different modules. So if you need to put a new module on, you can do that and then flash the software to it and configure it on the car. Or if there's been some sort of electrical hiccup and a module needs a reset by reflashing the software and then reconfiguring it. So a garage has got quite a powerful tool to get itself out of trouble to fix a car and get it out of the workshop without needing the help of a franchise dealer. What a thought. But now we come on to the Mercedes era car. So this is going to be V8 Vantage, all models of new V8 Vantage, and then the 5.2 twin turbo cars. So this is gonna be DBS Superleggera, DB11, and DBX. So those cars are gonna need what's called AMDS2. Now AMDS2 is not a standalone system. It must work through an internet connection back to the factory. It's also subscription based and you're gonna take out your annual subscription. Now, when it comes to buying that, then the factory does make that available for independent garages to buy. Now, you can't buy the AMDS one version that's now obsolete. So that's impossible to buy. And this is why you don't see very many new Aston Martin garages pop up. It's because they're going to need AMDS and your only option is to buy AMDS 2. Now the AMDS 2 comes as a workstation, so like a trolley that is workshop based and its starting price is £40,000 plus VAT. You're then gonna need a laptop to go with that so you can move around the workshop a bit. And that comes in at about 12,000 pounds plus VAT. But after you've spent your 52,000 pounds plus VAT, you haven't got a standalone system. It will always need to connect to the factory via a network connection for you to be able to use it. Now that subscription is tied up pretty heavily with some terms and conditions that mean at their whim the factory could remove your subscription and you're left with £52,000 worth of useless computer equipment that basically you'd be able to play solitaire on. Now it would be a brave garage owner that purchased that equipment under those terms and conditions to enable himself to look after what is quite small market. You know, a handful of DB11s, uh, DBS Superleggera, DBX and new V8 Vantage out there compared to thousands worth of the Gen 1 Ford era cars which work on the old AMDS system and it's standalone and you don't need any subscription for. 
Now there may be the odd independent garage out there that has bought that equipment, but I think take up of that equipment at £52,000 plus VAT, with all the associated risks of your subscription being cancelled, uh, means that it's going to put a fair few garage owners off. Uh, what that means is that independent garages will not have the ability to plug into those newer cars and reflash them with software, uh, totally get to the bottom of faults and be able to reset problems and get the car out the door. So, you know, if you take on a job, for instance, if it, it was as uh, innocent as paint work and you disconnected the door card, uh, the ignition is going to have to come on in the paint shop, just manoeuvre the car or, or get the steering lock off or do anything uh, where the ignition needs to be put on. And then accidentally, because the ignition is put on and there's some electronic architecture that's disconnected, it's going to put fault codes on. Now, if you haven't got the proper kit to get rid of those fault codes, you're in real big trouble. You're going to end up having to take the car to a dealer just to get a basic job done, uh, which means that if that happens to garage owners a couple of times, then they're going to steer clear of accepting any work on those cars. Yes, it's quite possible that there's some generic workshop kit out there. Um, Snap-on equipment maybe, it's configured to work on Mercedes cars and you plug it in, uh, tell it that you're not working on a Mercedes, you're actually working on an Aston. And maybe you can just do some basic stuff and reset fault codes and stuff like that. But these cars sometimes need a little bit more than that basic fault code resetting. And if you haven't got the ability to reconfigure, reprogram, learn modules, adaption processes, gear positions, all that sort of thing, and you can't reflash modules because you know, that's the way you reset them if they have a glitch, then you really are risking not being able to complete the job if you haven't got the proper kit. What that analysis is basically boiling down to is that the franchise network is pretty much the place to go for for your Gen 2 Merc era Aston. And if you have to take your car to franchise dealer to fix, then it's going to cost the packet if it's a big job. So you are going to want a warranty policy to protect you. So my opinion is if you've got the Gen 1 Gaiden era car, Ford, systems that work with AMD S1. If you bought your car from franchise dealer, you've got the extended warranty for a year, then terminate that, get out of the dealer network and come to the independent network. If you've got a Mercedes era car, well, it's hit and miss whether you're gonna be able to have that taken care of properly in the independent world. I would continue the warranty. And even though I talked last week about conflicts of service you're gonna to have to accept that and take out the warranty because that's a better position to be in than having to take a broken down Mercedes era Aston to the franchise dealer and pay for the parts and labor for the repair comparing those two eras is is quite interesting you know there's some subtleties here that people outside of a garage workshop wouldn't really know. You know, the fluids and lubes that those Mercedes era cars need is completely different to the previous Ford era. So any garage that is waving their flag saying we're gonna be looking after these cars needs a completely different fluid and lube store and practices in place to make sure people don't make mistakes. Also fixings, and all sorts of consumables and gaskets and everything is different. So, you know, you're doubling up your storeroom. We just spoke about the electronics being different. So there's gonna to have to be someone that knows AMD S2 and the Mercedes architecture and someone that knows the previous Ford era. So you're probably gonna to have to have a different person. To work on those Mercedes era cars is a bit different as well. Logistically, you know, if you have to do anything major to the front end, that whole clamshell has to come off and where do you store that? So there is quite a difference between Mercedes era cars and previous Gen 1 Gaiden era cars, as much as there is a difference between those cars and carburettors, wheel spinners, ignition distributors, but you wouldn't necessarily uh, say that there was a divide separating the 
Gen 1 Gaiden era cars from the Gen 2 as much as there is a Gen 1 Gaiden car from Heritage, but there is. Hope you enjoyed that analysis of the Aston world. And if you are on a Mercedes era Aston, do you take out the extended warranty? You know, these cars are just coming out of their sort of five year service package. So this is gonna be a real issue at the moment because people are gonna start taking those cars to garages and they haven't got warranty because they've not researched the situation enough. Give us your comments, click us a like, of course, please subscribe to the channel, it really helps us out. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next Forum Chat.